All right. Afternoon. What's up, man? How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good, good. So why don't you um, tell me a little bit about yourself? Your name is uh, Michael Sky, right? Yeah, well, that's uh, it's my stage name because Sky is my middle name. So cool. it flows a little, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I grew up, uh, I grew up, my family calling me that, so it worked well. I just that's kind of went with my name, you know. Right, right. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of my middle name. It's my father's name, so. Um, you see, you carry the torch, they, dude. Yeah, whenever they, uh, it just kind of clicks, right? Yeah, you carry the torch for your family, you know. Yeah. I got, I got my uncle's middle name, so. That's cool. So tell me a little bit about your music. Like, what is it, uh. I know all this different kind of music coming out has their own fly, flavor, style, um, area of the country that they come from even. Oh, yeah, for sure. I feel like reggae, there's so many different subgenres of reggae right now, specifically reggae. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard to, I don't know, man, it's, it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly what it would be. Like, exactly. I, I'm, you know, I just kind of just write whatever. What you know, whatever feels right, and I don't necessarily try and stick to one. Cert I mean, it's mostly reggae, you know, reggae rock, but I don't specifically try and stick to one little subgenre within that. I try and ex try and just do whatever feels right. Right, right. Yeah, whatever comes out, whatever feels good, and then obviously you probably you hear something or you you it just resonates with you, and then you probably just go with that, huh? it clicks dude because there's a lot of things that doesn't click you know like or they don't click and when i hear it and i'm like i was like why would i even think of something like that or i put it out and then it's i don't put it out to the world for the world to hear but i have you know my stash of recordings and when i put something on there and then i listen to it a couple times and i kind of like it at first but then i'm like ew <laughs> you know i don't i don't want to i don't want to put that out for people so i like there's i'm actually in the middle of re reworking something right now that I wrote lyrics to and I just am scratching them all. And it was kind of, I was actually, I'm actually going to record the song on Friday. So I'm oh. like, kind of, yeah. So I'm like crushing, you know, to get, to get them done. But I think the newer version now is way better than it was before, you know? So I'll, I'm not going to put anything out that, you know, that I don't, I don't like, I guess I would say. Right. Right. Do you feel like when you write music that you're um, not, not completely, but sort of reinventing yourself every time you are expressing this one song or this next song. For sure. I, yeah. yeah, definitely. You could say that because I think every song feels different. And as I'm moving, you know, it feels like I'm moving up almost. You could say like, like I'm moving upward in the direction that I'm taking my music just because it, it's something that I hadn't done before. And like, I guess I can, I mean, I can write a song that sounds like something I've written before, but when I write something new, it definitely feels like I'm pro progressing in a in a in a in a good way, you know, for music. For sure, for sure, that's cool. Um, how did you get into music? Like, um, did you just start like taking lessons on your own, or did you? Uh, was it just something you looked up to and you wanted to keep following, or? Well, my mom, my mom and my uh, dad were really into music, just like my family. My parents were DJs, and I just I always listened to like hard rock. Like I grew up on Stained, and uh, Three Eleven was another one I was really big into before I got into reggae. But then uh, my buddy or my cousin showed me Two AM by Slightly Stupid, and from that song, I just fell in love with reggae music and. It took me a while to figure out, you know, Revolution and all those guys, but I I I grew into the scene, and now it's it's been like it's like seventeen years. Like reggae is all I really do, but I oh, love yeah. rock, you know. I love I love all that stuff. So I've always been into music. Mm -hmm. it, uh, some guy brought in a guitar, an acoustic guitar, in fifth grade. His name is Chris. I'm gonna give him a shout out, Chris Markowitz. I'm sure. He'd, he, I don't really talk to him anymore, but he just was so good in fifth grade. And I was, I never even held a guitar. And I just, he showed me, you know, what everybody knows when they first pick up a guitar, smoke on the water. And he right. showed me that. And it was, it was cool. So I went home and told my mom about it. And then she happened to have a guitar there. And she showed me a, an A chord. And then I just started learning on my own by looking at tabs and figuring it out. And 
thank God I stayed with it because <laughs> that's all, all right. that's all I got right now is playing music. I'm not good. I'm not good at a whole lot other than playing and singing the songs. So I try and you know that's where I resonate the most. Well, the songs that I have heard, I do like a lot from you. Um, and you do have your own style, and I, I like that whole, um, like you said, slightly stupid, um, like their own take on it. Or <sighs> Revolution's real nice. We've seen them several times. We've seen slightly stupid several times. Um, yeah, stupid's awesome to see. For a while there, I got really into Ayaterra, and yeah, his is kind of like a reggae rock too. Uh, and it's pretty uh it's been a fun journey to chase these bands and see you guys when you come into town and 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 i'm every time i go to a new show i'm i'm running into a couple new bands that i like yeah and it's so cool hear some new music yeah which is cool you know it's just the community is definitely growing you know and it's and it's very open and they're very it seems to me that everybody's pretty welcoming and as into bringing in new artists on the scene you know and Playing shows, like all that stuff. Right, right. Um, let's see. Um, so you see, you see Slightly Stupid a couple of times? Um, I believe we saw them in um, Red Rocks. And trying to think where else we saw them. But we're trying to go see them in Colorado again um, with Fortunate Youth and is the other band it's slipping my mind but um i believe aurora wave is going to be out there or something like that oh, awesome is so the, my, movement, the movement as well i believe so the movement maybe yeah that's yeah, that's cool man yeah uh slightly stupid is awesome red rocks is probably crazy to see a show at I've never been there oh uh, i'm sure you'll be there eventually playing but it's it's a, it's a spectacular scene to to behold because it's it's almost unreal, but it's like right in the middle of all these beautiful, huge red rocks, literally. Yeah, I've only ever heard heard good things about it. Yeah. So tell me about one of your songs. The first one I um, heard was "My Way Home." Oh uh, right, yeah, yeah. That uh, but see, it is funny because I never really when I sit down and write. Sometimes it's hard for me to write about something specific. So I'll write a song, and it sounds like really good but then i won't really know what it's about until i guess i piece the song together if that makes sense like that one specifically you know it's just about i mean uh, just trying to figure out who i mean there's a lot of my songs are kind of about the same thing you know like me you know, and I, it's kind of like it's in deep insight shit but like you know but i guess about me trying to figure out who i am or finding myself like and working through mistakes and things like that like you know like i guess my way home would be for me trying to find out who i am and finding my you know myself i guess and through my music you know what i mean right right yeah so i mean I, that's a that's probably it's funny like you brought that one up first because that's my most popular song right now even though it's been out the longest so on right. spotify it'll tell you which one is your most listened to song at the moment and that one's been at the top for a while just right. Weird. Well, as yeah, soon as like um, we actually uh, heard about heard your music through Spotify because my uh, my wife listens to that a lot, and then uh, she's always looking for new bands that kind of pop up that sound good, or and then she's like, "Hey, who's this?" And I was like, "I don't know. Ask you know, ask Alexa or whatever." And then she's told us, and I was like, "Okay, I might turn that up." And then we were jamming probably to three or four of your songs in a row. That makes me happy, dude. That makes me really happy. It was dope. It was yeah. fun. It's cool, man. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really that. I'm not really out there like that, you know. I'm, I I really only play around my town where I live uh, for now, like bigger shows. But or to me, they're bigger. But when I, you know, I'm trying to get on the road. I just got to make sure I have the right crew and I right. got to have the vehicle to move around. You know, like a trailer or some sort. I'm still. I'm still in the midst of trying to figure it all out. Right. And, make it happen but it's gonna happen soon because the wheels are turning so good good cool well hopefully you guys roll by here and stop in new mexico because we we love reggae reggae rock or you know soja and they the crowd here likes pretty much everything that comes by it's getting the word out to get more people to show up yeah, yeah that'd be but, awesome man i'd love to go. i'd love dude i'd love to see so many different places that i've never been to but new mexico would be awesome 
Right on. Okay, tell me about the song Alive. Oh, so that song I wrote with uh, my buddy Milo Danakta. He is also my producer, one of my producers, and he, um, he, we were talked about doing a joint collaboration an album on this. We're like where we work on putting songs out together. You know, that was just something that we both poured our hearts into more or less, like our lyrics together, and which is something I really liked doing because it was us just putting what we had thought the song would sound like in our own perspective, but putting it together, you know, which is something I really like about collabing. Yeah. But it's, uh, I mean, I guess, you know, it's about just wanting to feel what you wanted from something or someone all along, like, or what you wanted to feel from the start of a relationship or right. what you want right. to feel like if you were like in the beach last year and you missed it and you wanted to go jump in the ocean, but you can't cause it's cold or you're not by the beach, you know, or you're not by the water. And so, you know, it's just, just like wanting to feel alive again by the thing that you love the most, you know, that's beautiful. Like, well, that one for me was more, it was more a relationship, you know, type right. of thing, but it really, like, it has, it can mean, you know, it can mean so many different things to who right. you're listening to that one, you know. Which is super dope about all this music is you're singing about a feeling in a scenario or a situation or a person that is in your mind, and, and we all kind of hear the same words and um, maybe picture someone, you know, whether it's like seeing your grandma and giving them a hug or, or you're coming home to your wife and you know she gets you. Right. And, or like, I'm a Cali kid, so I grew up in the ocean and trying to surf, going in the water to my could get in. And you're right, when it's cold, it wakes you up, but you feel alive when you're out. <laughs> yeah. You're just Especially alive. out in California, that's some cold water, dude, all the time, isn't it? I'm sure East Coast is pretty cold too. Up in right the now, it's, right now it's freezing. Yeah. All right. Um. Okay. The next song is uh, "Tell Me About Fire and Plastic." Oh well, that's another. Uh, that's another song about just relationships you have with people. Uh, you know, just a negative relationship that you feel you might have, and you know, sometimes it's. I mean, to me, because I'm pretty notorious for doing this, if I have a bad relationship, I'll just, you know, I'll be quick to just cut it out and cut it off, you know. And probably not the best thing to do in some cases, but and and the ones where you feel like it's justified, I, I find it okay. Right. You know, just not being in a, in a situation with somebody that you don't necessarily have to be in a situation with anymore, you know. Right, right. Whether that be playing music in a band with somebody, which I have been in many situations – playing music with people that I just do not get along with and I just couldn't do it anymore or whether that be a relationship or a family member, you know, or a friend that you just aren't friends with, you can't be friends with anymore. Right. Yeah. You know, the fire and the plastic, who wants to burn plastic? You know what I mean? We don't want to, but it, and then what do we do with it too? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We don't want to throw it away either. No, right. We, you got to find some kind of a, uh, way past it right in any situation yeah for sure a healing a healing way right right all right well let's let's talk about um, what's one country that you hope to play in that you know, you're like, oh, I always want to go there. Or I'm going to play in Brazil or something like that. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think Guam. Because that's where I see there's a lot of reggae music coming out of there. Cool. And I think they would love to hear. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I think they'd love to hear different styles of reggae, you know, from like the mainland, like Oster, United States, you know. Mm -hmm. Even though they're sure they've heard it before, but, you know, it's different live. Right. Right, right. Let's see. Even though I'm not even sure where Guam is on a map, to be honest with you. <laughs> I want to say it's like maybe in between 
like China and Hawaii somewhere over there. But I'm not I'm not certain. Right. Hey, I've I've been to Hawaii a bunch of times. I have family out there, but I've never and they've got a good reggae scene, a really great reggae scene. But I, and so in Guam has its has its own thing too, you know. Right, right. Just a few yeah. you can hear it. Well, same with the like the Polynesian Islands with Common Kings and Yeah. Uh, they all have their own kind of Hawaiian island vibe to all their music. And yeah. very open, loving, kind of inclusive music for a lot of people. Oh, for sure, man. I, I, I was listening to, when I'd go over there, I'd always find this radio station and I'd put it on. It's called KCCN FM 100. And it was like, just play the local modern reggae that was coming out over only on in Hawaii at the time. And uh, when I came back home to the East Coast, I was listening to it on a tune-in radio app. So I was listening to the radio station while I was here, which is, right. you know, that's how much I love. I mean, I love Hawaiian reggae, like Mayoli and the Green. And, oh, yeah, uh, the Green is awesome. Yeah, even some of the bands out of New Zealand, like the Sons of Zion, they're really good. Yeah. Is there, there's a couple, I mean, there's a lot of great bands. Mike Love is super awesome. He's dope. Where is he out of? Hawaii too. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I saw him play at Secrets last year with Ayaterra. Oh, nice. Hell yeah. Yeah, I was the year before that, maybe. We've only seen him once, but man, I got up close and in front. I was super stoked. Yeah, dude, that loop pedal, the looping that he does is insane to me. I don't know how he, I don't know how he keeps it going. I don't either. Like, <laughs> I tried uh, practicing guitar for like six months, and I was like, Something's not. It's I can't. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he's he's well he loops his vocals too, which is another thing. And he's just, you know, it's to the next level. I mean, the playing solo like that, it's very impressive. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But so Little Strangers yeah. killing it, dude. Like they two piece, you know. Little strangers they're, fun. Yeah, but they're not uh and they're not even they're not, I mean, I guess they loop stuff, you know, but they're, I mean, that's like to be a single or a, a solo or a duo group out doing that kind of stuff is, is pretty intense. Right. Right. We have a lot of uh, local bands here that I, I love chasing around and they have their own kind of, uh, you know, uh, New Mexico style and vibe to themselves too. And, and each band is literally different too. And it's in interesting to see, just every time I go out to a show, it's a new band I didn't know, and now I like them. Or um, I'm running in and meeting you guys afterwards because you guys hang out and shake hands. And it's just such a cool scene that everybody's always smiles and, you know, passing a dube or whatever. Yeah, man. It's a, it's definitely a good, good vibe, you know, feeling, going to a reggae show and especially after like I cause I love to go to shows still, you know. Right. I love I mean we don't really have any reggae bands around here though, unfortunately. Except for my cover band, but we go to uh Secrets in the summertime, which is a, a place we have over here in Maryland, like on the beach. And it's really it's they do a good job at bringing out reggae acts. Like they brought out Ayaterra, they bring out Ballyhoo every year because they're Maryland boys. Uh bring out they bring out some pretty big names uh expendables i think oh i don't know actually i don't know if that's true but there's a couple bands that are coming through this year that's cool hell yeah hell yeah we need to get the scene just like constantly flowing yeah well i think it's doing a good job of that itself man just by like the music itself being so contagious you know i was playing uh a show this past thursday where i play at it uh i play there every week and there was this it was an older couple, maybe like 70s or something like that. And they came in and sat at the table and I didn't think they would like what I play because I just loop, you know, reggae music. And I was playing Slightly Stupid Officer and they were singing every single word. And I started <laughs> playing Revolution and they were like, play more Revolution. And it was just so cool, you know, to see like some people you wouldn't expect that listen to reggae. And they actually really, they really listen to reggae, you know. That, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, we went to Reggae Rise Up last year, um, and just seeing the whole crowd and everybody, 
you find like every age, every nationality, every personality you can possibly think of there. And everybody's just jamming out nice and relaxing, no drama, no stress. Which one did you go to? Oh, Las Vegas. Oh, Las Vegas. My buddies are going to that one uh, next year. We already got our tickets, but as we, we can't wait. Yeah, I've never, I've never been to one. We have one in Maryland now too, which I should be going to, but it's just so far away. But I have Ocean's Calling, which is right down the street from my house, so that's not a bad one. Hell yeah, hell yeah. No reggae rise up though. Well, hopefully we'll get you up there big enough and uh, out there enough that you'll you'll get to go to these bigger reggae rise up Cali roots or something like on a Hawaiian tour or whatever. Yeah, dude. That'd be dope yeah. to see you out there touring a lot. Oh, I'd love that, man. I'd love just go. That's what I'd like to do is just play a couple, you know, little runs with some bands, you know, and get out there. But it'll it'll happen over time. I just got to put a little bit more into it. But I'm still I have, I play in a cover band and we play um, all the time, pretty much until the end of the year. And I have so I haven't booked for next year yet. So I'd like to try and start doing little runs next year, opening up for some bigger bands. That'd be dope. That'd be really dope. Yeah. Okay, so um, favorite movie? Oh shit! Uh, Hot Rod. Hot Rods. Okay, nice. Yeah. And what's what's yours? Um, it's a really really hard one because it depends on the like, type of movie. But I would say one of my top favorites is probably um, Shawshank Redemption. Oh, that's a good one. That's I just like all the metaphors and the stuff they tell each other and the stuff they were saying. It was just like, oh, okay. That's some real serious shit, dude. You went with the intense one, Miles, over here. You ever see Hot Rod? I think I did a long time ago when I was uh, growing up, but I yeah, haven't seen it in a long time. It's kids' humor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And um, do you, uh, what are your takes on? Aliens or Bigfoot? Uh, with the aliens, I feel like there's probably something out there. I don't know. I play devil's advocate on myself a lot. Like, I, I, there has to be something out there because how could we be the only things? But then at the same time, I'm like, well, if there were, then why haven't we seen them yet? But you know, that's I just I mean I, I'm flip flop back and forth. And Bigfoot, I don't know, man. I don't know. I I haven't really seen a whole lot about that. You know, to know, to really say something. I guess I would say, yeah, you want to hide in the mountains somewhere. But what mountains would he be hiding in? In America? That's what they say all over, supposedly. But, I mean, there's there's a lot of interesting stories and recant, uh, not recanting, but um, of telling of different stories that people say they've seen or been through or heard or whatever. And it's always interesting to hear. And I think as a kid, I always hoped he was real because it was such a, a cool idea or a wild yeah. guy in the mountains when we go camping. What if he's watching us? You know what I mean? He's a mega man, dude. Right? He's huge and hairy. I feel like there's got to be some kind of extraterrestrials out there. I don't know if it's like necessarily uh, uh, intelligent or non-intelligent. I think there's something out there. And maybe it's part of our subconscious that we just don't even realize. I don't know. But I, I like to believe in that there's something going on. Um, there's a lot of military, high-ranking military who came out and said that, like, for real stuff happened. And they weren't allowed to tell nobody. But now they are. And it's like, man, I really, really want to see something, though. Like, Yeah, you're in the area where you probably would see something, right? <laughs> right. I mean, I'll, if there's anywhere around here, you're going to see it. <laughs> I, I, you know, we sit in our hot tub sometimes at night and we hope to see something, but we just see mostly interesting stars or shooting stars or, you know, I don't know if it's like satellites going by or what, but we see stuff that's up there going in, you know, not, not necessarily straight lines, but um, it's definitely an interesting thing that has came more to the surface lately. Because back in the days, if you even mentioned, they're like, oh, you're crazy. You know, yeah, you well, see you things. Got phones now, bro, to prove it. You know, all you got to do is press record, and now it's, it's there. Right. Yeah, I think all that stuff's fun to um, 
hope that it's not just us here. Like, yeah, it's nice to think about that, but then at the same time, I don't need any of that shit in my life right now. I'm, last thing I need is some right. motherfucker coming down and zooming me up. You know what I mean? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying to get probed, bro. Right? Unless they like, like touch the part of your brain, they just like, and you're like, yeah, oh yeah, they open up like your third eye, right? And it's gonna be awesome now, and you're like, oh, whatever happened? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did it for you. I wish they'd come down and help my lower back. Oh, dude, you got that too. Yeah, I've had some. Uh, I'm I'm a disabled vet, so I've had a little bit of injuries throughout that. But um, mostly try to just be peaceful, a peaceful warrior now. Yeah, you've got worse back problems than I do, though. I just I, mine just hurts, and I just have my kids walk on it. Right, I don't have any kids, so. I don't have that pleasure, but get anyone to walk on it, man. Oh, uh, no, nah, I'm just kidding. You don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. So tell me about this other song. I like no need. Oh, uh, so that was one of the songs that I didn't really have a whole lot of meaning behind it. When I wrote it, I just was like, sometimes I'll just say words together in a sentence and it sounds good. So I put it together, but <clears throat> After, like, I sat down and listened to that song for a while, you know, it was just about trying to turn over a new leaf in the sense of getting rid of the negativity, not, like, from other people, but within yourself and trying to move forward and not burn bridges and, you know, keep, you know, keep positive relationships in your life. Right. It, it was, I was sitting on that song for a really long time. I was sitting on it for, like, three years before I let it out. And Greg from Cashed Out, which was cool. You know, he was really cool when doing the song with me. And I appreciate it a lot. He's a cool guy. They were dope when they came into town. It was really dope to see them. Yeah, they're, they're great, man. And we saw them at uh, Reggae Rise Up, too, which was cool. Um, yeah. I like their music a lot because I'm a Cali kid, and I'm all about that surfing and skating or whatever. Like, I wish I could still do that stuff, but... I'm definitely probably out of shape and a little too old to jump on a board anymore, but yeah, never too old, bro. <laughs> right. Get back in shape and then just jump on. But I love all that music and, um, cashed out and expendables and, um, the elevators, the elevators are coming up. They're doing good. They're yeah. Doing I, mean, good. I think they're the, them a little stranger. I think were the biggest things right now in reggae music that are coming up, you know? I really like their music a lot, too. Um, another band that's from Cali that I just now found out about, like, not too long ago, um, is Lake Dub. They're dope. Super dope. I think I've, I think I've heard of them just through social media, you know? Right. I, love, like, I like their music a lot. That's cool. I'll have to check them out. So tell me a little bit um, about your childhood or... Um, You know, I don't know anything that's personal that you'd like to share that that's not too personal. I mean, it was. I mean, I, just, my, I mean, I don't really have anything that's you know like anything personal that I don't want to share. You know, my childhood was pretty. I mean, it was pretty cool. You know, I live. I've lived at the beach my whole life. Uh, I didn't always go to the beach when I was a kid. Um, when I was a teenager, I started going to the beach all the time and. You know, when everybody starts driving, when they start driving themselves, that's when you kind of gain your independence and you get to do everything you want to do. So going to hang out with my friends, smoking weed, you know, skipping school in the morning like an idiot. Right. Which I should not have done looking at it now. But, I mean, it was just choir, so it's whatever. But right. then, you know, I worked uh, security at a bar over here in Ocean City. And then I did... Yeah, you know, just just jobs like all around, just construction. But then I started a band in like 2016, and we called the Rogue Citizens, and we're just a cover band. We used to play originals, but we don't so much. We don't actually at all anymore. But we play around town because it's a resort town, so we are pretty slow in the winter. No one's here except for locals. But then when summer rolls around. It's, I mean, dude, you couldn't fit any more people on this little island. Like, it's insane. 
That's it makes it, it's so small. It's like maybe like four, five miles long. And it's only like, you know, it's like, I mean, there's only two roads in between the beach and the bay. Right. It's, it's pretty nice here. I used to hate it and call it ocean shitty, but growing up, you know, I definitely realized how much I like it. Yeah. That's cool. Hell yeah. Well, if you could, um, if you could meet your 10 year old self, what do you think is the best advice you could give yourself? Pay attention in school. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that is hard. That's a, that's a tough lesson. I had to learn the, the hard way. Oh dude, me too, man. I wish I paid attention in school. Yeah, I did not. And I, for that, I did not get a good education after high school. And I wish I did. Cause I mean, I, I don't mind what I do. I work construction and I play music, but I mean, you know, I mean, I guess if I, if I had an office job or something, I wouldn't be able to eventually go on the road or play the shows that I do now. So true, true, true. Wow. I recant that statement. I'd tell 10 year old me to say, fuck it and play, pick up the guitar. <laughs> right. Follow, follow what you love and follow what you feel deep inside as your passion, not just what other people think. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what I would tell myself is like what you, what you're passionate. So I'm more of a, a drawer painter type artist. And if I would have stuck to that, doing it more, I'd probably be a lot more skilled now a lot. You know, I'd probably enjoy it a lot more, but I, I wanted to party and, you know, I had dyslexia, so it was hard in school to, to pay attention, and I probably have ADD or whatever. But, yeah, definitely if I could have stuck to what I really enjoyed and not listened to anybody else's opinion, you know, I might have had something right now that I, I'm actually really good at and, and take pride in, I guess. Yeah, you see, we always say here and wonder what we should have done and told told our past selves we should be worrying about what we can tell ourselves now because you know i need to get my ass moving on some music <laughs> right start digging out some of those nuggets that that you're that you know i have a friend here who plays in a local band and they're called the rhythms and miles um had a song that he said he wrote called marijuana which you already know what that means basically uh pot smoker right and he was like, yeah, I don't know if I wanted to put this out because I don't know if people would like it or, or whatever. And and then you're like, he actually played it and everybody loved it. So now he plays it. And yeah. sometimes we're a little insecure about about our artwork, huh? And we, just, we, we don't know if we want to show people, but we want to because we're proud of it. But I think if you like it, if you like it yourself, then you should show it to people. Right. You know, but if you don't, but then if, if you don't like it yourself without the influence of other people's opinions, you know, like if, if you come up with that in your, in your own head, like if I, cause if I, if there's something I didn't like of mine and I, and I didn't want to show it to anybody, then I probably wouldn't, unless it was just like, Hey, check this out. This isn't going to last, but just listen to it. Cause it's funny or I don't like it. What do you think about it? But I don't know if I'd ever release anything I don't like, or well, I haven't, but I don't, I don't know, you know, I mean, I guess it, I mean, you could, I mean, I guess people do release things they don't like, you know, just because somebody else tells them it's good. You never know. I mean, sometimes the, the more, I don't want to say simple, but the, sometimes the songs that are less deep connected, more fun and like about life and enjoying life catch on popular wise, whereas some of your more, deep important stuff may not be um played on the radio or or xm radio or whatever but yet you know your your followers will like your more important songs because they know it's like more deeply connected than just you know drinking beer and smoking pot on the beach right exactly which is you know like i think there's a love for all this art and everybody's music that anybody wants to play it doesn't matter if it's reggae or not and i think there's so many different um flavors and and styles and um types of music that i've liked obviously over the my decades of being alive but i was you know i grew up as a 
I mean, I liked all kinds of different stuff because my mom raised me with some of the R and B, soul, Jackson Five type stuff, and then my dad raised me more on like some more of the rock, uh, country, um, and you know, you find these other artists in between that you maybe follow and like because it's something you like yourself, and maybe your parents didn't introduce you to it, right. and you become you know big fans and. And I've definitely become a fan of yours so far. So I hope that you write more. I hope that you. I will, dude. I'm working with uh, Ted from Pacifier right now. Oh, nice. Yeah, so we're, he's going to help me put out um, some music. I don't know exactly what or how long it'll be, but I'm hoping I'll have at least a new song out uh, by summer. That's cool. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, he's awesome. He's brought my. He's helped bring my music to the next level. He's. He helps me transform my ideas, and it's nice working with a pro. I've listened to Pacifier since I was, I mean, in high school, like pre-smoking weed era. Mm -hmm. And he has uh, been so cool. He only lives like 45 minutes away. So, oh, that's right. Hell yeah. And it's a small area around here. We definitely like Pacifier. Um, we saw them with the Good Vibes uh, tour. With Revolution, Iration, and Expendables. That was, that was so dope. Dude, that was a good lineup. Man, I wish I could have got up front, you know, with the crowd. Because I had, like, I think we were, like, four seats back where we were sitting, which was still pretty close. But, man, I was dying to go up there in front. <laughs> Dude, I, uh, I got there uh, right before the doors opened. I was, like, fifth in line waiting for the doors to open. And then I grabbed, like, seven or I was, like, I grabbed, like, five waters water bottles and i like sprinted to the front and i ate a bunch of mushrooms before it started and uh oh yeah me and my buddy that i play music with now we were up there waiting and because i love all four of those bands i mean i grew up listening to all of them and past fire especially because they're just so dude they're so fucking good and they like that's like what that's like the what i was talking about like little tiny sub genres within you know like bands that like like no one sounds like past fire you know Right, right. And, but dude, when they came on and that sub, like that kick hit, I thought I thought my heart skipped the beat because I was tripping so hard, and like I was just like, <laughs> and they dude, they came on and killed it though, dude. There's like past and Expendables were great. It was a great. That was probably the greatest uh, lineup of bands I'd ever seen in one show. Yeah, and that's a hard one for me because so many shows that I go to are uh, some of the smaller venue shows. And they're bands similar to you and, you know, some of them that are uh, closing that night or the main stage are, you know, very new young bands too. But then we go see them. We're like, hell yeah, these guys are freaking awesome. And then, you know, I, I go to most of these shows and I try to record the whole show so that I can put it on my YouTube and, and show more people and get more views because, um, with the demographics that I've seen is like Spain, um, Indonesia, Brazil, Mexico, some in Canada. And it's just like, if I can get the word out or get your music out even further to people here and, it, and they're checking you out and, and then maybe to get it rolling even quicker. Yeah, I mean, that's I'm, awesome. I'm a little tiny channel, but I'm just trying to give more light to the music that I run into that I like that. I'm like, I never heard of these guys or, this is, a, you know, I think I heard uh, maybe your music a couple weeks ago, and I was like, "Who, who is this?" So, dude, that's, I mean, that's how it works, though, because there's, there's people that listen to your channel and and listen to those concerts that you post. That's, you know, you help them find new music that they enjoy, which is awesome. And I hope it like brings more positivity or more Rasta in general to people because it, it brings me a lot of peace. It's helped me a lot with my mental health. Um, I started getting a lot more into um, the reggae genre of the revolution when I got sober from alcohol like eight years ago. Oh, congrats, and, dude. Oh, uh, and it was, it was rough. I thought, I didn't know if I was going to make it, but I started, I started smoking cause it was a uh, medical and now it's legal here. And that helped a lot. And then the music just always helps ground me and kind of give me words to think about, like being compassionate or being understanding or finding yourself. And 
you know, um, stay the course and all these great messages that I take to the heart and I try to live by, by not being, you know, um, an asshole to people around me by trying to think of the, my family members and my wife that instead of myself. And I try to, and your guys' music so encouraging that mental health wise, it's probably really, really been, it's been much better than say any depressants or anything like that for sure. Absolutely, Yeah. So I love it. I think I can't wait to hear more. And my wife's definitely like, She's like, you're gonna interview him. I'm like, yeah. I was like, that's awesome. He's like, that's sweet. Hell yeah. And that's cool, man. That's I'm, exactly I'm, a, so excited. I'm a little like you said. There's little pockets of these music. I'm the little pocket by myself. I mean, I think got a little over 400 subscribers, but I'm hoping to gain more and more and more as as we add, and then hopefully Dude. people will come to the shows. Yeah, man. I think that's. I think what you're doing right now is is it. You know, I think that's gonna. That's how it happens. You know, we're going to see the Whalers coming up um, in Santa Fe, and um, we're taking my buddy uh, Miles Chavez from the from the Rhythms also, and um, the Whalers are sold out, like completely sold out, and so that's what I'm hoping to do for all these other bands I like is when they come to town, hopefully it's sold out. Yeah, for sure. You make them have a good show. So right. if it's tickets at the door, I want that place packed. Yeah. But I love going. I enjoy doing it. I, I like having a recording of it that we can watch later because, you know, I try to get front and get the best view I can. And then my wife always sits in the back where she can relax and listen to the music. And um, then she we watch it on our TV later and we're just like, oh, that was so good. I can't let, you know. Yeah, I like to ride the rail, man. If I feel like if I'm not riding the rail, I'm not even there. Right. I have to be able to see him as close as I can. Right. I just saw three eleven, and they I, I got as close as I could. But they had a section for VIP where you couldn't like you couldn't be up on the stage. Mm -hmm. but, and I'm I'm hoping because I'm doing this for self enjoyment for a hobby, but I'm also doing it to hopefully um, build some kind of a media connection with some of these bands. And then hopefully when it gets to shows where there's a rail that they'll let me be on the other side so I can film from any direction, multiple cameras. Um, I'm already investing in that part uh, myself, but like right now you can only bring in your phone and yeah. uh, luckily a lot of places let me bring in a gimbal. So my footage is real steady, but there's some places like the Isleta Amphitheater. They don't allow you to bring in like a selfie stick or anything. Um, so sometimes your footage is shaky or whatever. Well, I wonder if you did it through, if you did it through yeah. the band, you know, like if you had reached out to the band or their manager beforehand and was like, Hey, I want to record your show or do a video or something like, you know what I mean? And um, I wonder what they'd say. You know, and I'm, I, I would like to, um, but I also try to uh, tread lightly when it comes to certain things like that, because I don't want people to think that I'm trying to gain something. It's more about like, just pure pleasure and doing it for them. Cause I wouldn't charge anybody either. I would just be like, if you come to town, I'll, you know, I'll be up front filming whatever you want. And then you get a copy of all your music anyways. Um, I'll drop box it to you. And that's, that's also how I try to like obviously help get interviews and talk to these people and because I think there's a lot of like important stuff behind the music, even though it makes you feel good and it sounds good. It's fun to jam to. Right. There's a lot of importance behind why you guys are singing the stuff. And um, a lot of times it just resonates too. Like when, if you sing about a woman you love or whatever, or maybe you're singing about ganja in a female way, it makes me think of my wife. And I think, you know, I do feel like that and she does bring me joy and, and it's just nice and courage, you know, confidence and uh, openness and open-mindedness. And it's just really a, it's been a fun journey so far and I don't plan on stopping until I physically can't do it no more. So hopefully yeah, keep going, man. Hopefully you'll be chasing a lot more and um, hopefully you'll be coming in town sometime and, and if I ever can, I, I'm 
kind of friends with a couple of the bands here. So if they're ever doing some show and you are close by, um, I yeah. can I can try to put in a, a word and say, hey, this guy would like to play. That'd be um, awesome, dude. I'm trying I'm trying to get my music out there to as many people as possible. I've only ever played two shows with my original music, but this summer I have four coming up. I'm playing with uh, Mike Pinto on the 16th oh, yeah. or the 18th. Uh, I'm playing with a band called Higher Education, May 26th. Uh, I'm playing with Cashed Out and Dale and the Z-Dubs on June 1st. And then I'm doing also uh, Just Dale and the Z-Dubs on July 27th. Dude, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I've got some good ones. Hopefully, like, after this, hopefully after that, you'll be like, y'all have 12 shows every year, and I, you have your path, and you hit all your, all your places, and it's just... Dude, I want more than that, man. I'm hungry. I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm ready to eat, dude. I, I want to go, like, I want to, I mean, I want to do, I'm going to start on the East Coast and try and work my way up and down it or, you know, wherever, wherever mm -hmm. I can, you know, but not for too long at a time. I need, I want to, I want to start off. Well, I, I really do whatever. If anybody asked me and they told me, like, I need you to do this song, I'd be like, I'll do it that long. That's cool as hell. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, yeah, I hope you act, I hope you do blow up so that we can we can see you. And I know you know I know there's a lot of um, finances that are involved in touring, and and I'm sure there's places that you have to hit and go, and then there's certain places that they try to add in or or whatever happens. Because I don't, I don't know how like I don't know how bands actually get gigs. Like, do you gotta do you have somebody that has to call different spots and say, hey, can I come play, or do you have somebody you know? Uh, yeah, it's, well, when we do cover shows, we usually hit people up, and when we put on a good show our first time, if they'd never heard of us, then they invite us back, and then if we're not a good fit, then they wouldn't call us back, mm -hmm. and so we would just keep playing there consistently, but places, like if I, if for example, if I'm trying to get the gig for Cashed Out, I have a buddy that is booking Cashed Out that I think they hit cashed out up. I'm not sure who hits who up. If the band reaches out or if the uh, uh, the venue hits the band up, but I do know that somebody, somebody's if if I, I'll, I'm sorry, I'm trying to think if I'm because I, I it's because you got me stumped now because I'm wondering like you know would the tour manager hit up. I guess it would be the tour manager. He probably books all your gigs for you and lines it up in a way that is the most convenient for your, you know, for your, for your shows. Like, cause cashed out plays the point break festival in Virginia, which is only two hours away. Mm -hmm. And on the second, so the first, they're probably looking for something to do to play while they're over here. So they booked a show close that they knew they had cause they played last year. And we, well, I played with them last year and we sold it out. It was actually my first show, and then two weeks later, I played with Little Stranger, which was my, which was really fun. But they, I, the venue, I guess it depends, you know, if, if they put on a good show or not. Like if they sold tickets, like if they didn't sell any tickets at all and it was like completely dead, then I can't imagine that they'd have them back. But that's not the case with Cashed Out, you know. Right, right. Well, if you ever um, end up coming this way to the west um and yeah well there's a couple of arizona bands that we try to see when they come into town um one is the irie oh uh, yeah they were just here they're super dope they were just here my buddy just saw them this past friday they play uh we play with aaron wolf right yep we saw them yeah, in Santa Fe. that's so funny yeah they were just here i had i had to play that night with my cover band so i couldn't make it but that's that's cool that you said that yeah they i had never heard of them until they came through which is cool, which is why I'm saying it's such a nice, small, tight-knit community where everybody, you know, like, word gets around. Yeah. Yeah, you got to you gotta kind of network yourself and get to know these other bands when you're out on the tour, right? And and then you got to talk your uh, uh, haggling, schnaggling to see, hey, can I tag along or, or whatever? And yeah, hopefully they always have, like, an open spot. Because I know some of the uh, venues here, seem to be uh booked a lot so it's probably hard to get in there um but 
Yeah, I mean, talk to George from the IRE. He's super good. He's super cool. And um, Fayuka's from Arizona also. I've heard of that. They're pretty good, and he seems nice. Um, but, yeah, if you, get, if you come over here, ask those guys to uh, play with them too because they come into New Mexico a lot, and then sometimes we follow them to Arizona. But um, there's all these – bands that are like you just hungry hungry and they're playing wherever they possibly can and i'm like i'm like sitting there trying to chase them because i'm like oh shit on instagram I'm like oh another show it's in five days or whatever we gotta go and then it's over here it's up in taos it's in new mexico you know south southeast or whatever and and then it's just so much fun though to see you guys live and then um the message you guys put out is just so awesome the inclusiveness and um, kind of having compassion and love for each other that, you know, is so much more like feels so much better in this music realm than a lot of the stuff that's going on outside and the bigger, you know, recording stuff and people right. being gross and just, you know, disturbing or whatever. It's like, at least the reggae community seems to be genuine and like look out for each other and kind of just, it does seem that way. It does. It seems that way. I wonder if it's that way on the inside. I'm sure it is. <laughs> you know, right, right. But I think it's. I think it's. Yeah, I like. It. I mean, it's definitely on. From what it seems, everything seems like you know. It's definitely more uplifting than country music, rap, or rock. Yeah. You know? And I and I liked rap growing up, but I got more into the hip hop when I was really young. So like all the stuff that wasn't hardcore gangster and stuff it was like run dmc or whatever i didn't mind i liked that stuff a lot later on i got into other rap because i was in you know those uh teenage moods or age or angry at the world whatever right and then i got into punk rock which i liked a lot and metal obviously like you were saying stained um breaking benjamin um slipknot slipknot nirvana all these old school kind of grungy bands that i liked you know, shine down or whatever. Um, but I realize music puts me in the mood. So depending on what I listen to is what mood I become for the day. And everything I listen to in the reggae, it's like, I'm never in a bad mood now. Like I try not to be in a bad mood. And before it was so easy to be in a bad mood, but I'm like listening to heavy metal and driving on a crotch rocket, just, you know, being an idiot going 130 <laughs> in a one way yeah and you're like what am i doing why am i going this fast and trying to you know see it's what happens the music, happens. Man. The music right. influences your mood i feel like you know and that's why whenever i do my stuff like i grow um my own cannabis and as a hobby and everything i'm also growing shrooms um i've already spored some stuff and um we like to do a lot of like different types of uh things that put me in a good mood, but I'm always listening to reggae and it's always a mix. Like sometimes I'll listen to a lot of say tribal seeds, but, yeah. then, but like when the Spotify or whoever brings up a new artist that I've never heard of, I'm like, hell yeah, who's this? And I'm always checking. So um, I hope everybody keeps an eye out for Michael sky because his awesome music will be coming through and you guys will probably be pretty amazed and um, he seems like a really great guy, so I appreciate you coming on today. Hell yeah, dude. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks for asking all the questions and being into my music. That means a lot to me. Just It's it's nice to hear other people resonate and enjoy listening to the stuff I put out. It, it That's what I wanted the most. Um, we also are completing a airbnb that's up in the mesa kind of so it's like the surrounding area feels very new mexican mesa um but we want to build it into um mesa vibes type of chill recording jamming and that's then good. bands who come into town can stay there for free while they're here on tour or whatever and just like to kind of give back a little when, when you guys come into town so that it's not as expensive or a little place that your whole band can relax. Right. Yeah. Dude, that's a great idea, man. I think a lot of people would be about it. I mean, you guys are always, uh, um, scratching and saving and trying to get it done. And 
it would make me feel better if you guys are obviously booked all the time because then I know you're coming around, but I also know that you're hopefully getting paid and can feed your family or yourself or whatever. And yeah. then you come back and then still enjoy everything and not be like, oh, New Mexico is so small. Like, why do they, they need to come out more? But I'm, I mean, I'm willing to put out flyers. So, yeah, man, that makes the diff. That makes, that all makes a difference, you know? Right on. Well, thank you for coming on. And I really appreciate the time. And I'm definitely looking forward to more of your music. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me, dude. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I appreciate you, bro. You too, buddy. Right on, man. Right on.